Now, three point estimate is one of the duration estimating technique. Uh, the technique is based on historical data. Uh, the technique can be applied at overall project level also, and it can be applied at activity level also. Now, let's let's take an example where the technique is applied to project. Now, let's say there are some set of projects which have been executed by your organization in past. <coughs> And you have a historical data corresponding to those projects. Now, based on the historical data on, let's say, time or cost, right now we will talk specifically about time. Based on the historical data, you can find out which was the best case scenario. For example, uh, which of these, pro which of the project was done in least amount of time. Right? We can also find out the most likely scenario, generally what it takes to complete the project or maybe the average time in which the project has got accomplished and we can also find out the worst case scenario. Sometimes project uh, would have taken a long time to accomplish. So we have three points corresponding to the, the data of the project the best case scenario which is also called as optimistic, the most likely scenario and the worst case scenario which is also called as pessimistic. Now let's assume that your data is <coughs> randomly distributed or let's say when you plot the curve of your historical data it takes a shape of beta distribution or a normal curve. Right, uh, as depicted uh, in front of you on the screen. Now, if let's say the data takes a bell curve or a normal distribution curve, we also call it as PERT, Program Evaluation and Review Technique. Now, based on the three points, uh, the best case scenario, uh, the most likely scenario, and the worst case scenario, we can find out the expected duration of the project using the formula optimistic plus 4 times most likely plus pessimistic by 6. Now let's take a very very simple example. Uh, let's say for a project uh, the best case scenario <coughs> optimistic was 5 days, the most likely scenario was 7 days and pessimistic was 15 days, the, the worst case scenario. Now based on that please use the formula expected time is equal to optimistic plus 4 times most likely plus pessimistic by 6 and find out the expected time. Simple mathematics guys, do it quickly. Simple basic mathematics. So what is the value of optimistic? 5 Seven. plus 4 times most likely. Optimistic is 5 plus 4 times most likely. What is most likely? 7. Seven. So, 4 times this will be 28. So this is 5 plus 28. How much is this? Yes, plus pessimistic, 15. So we have 5 plus 28 plus 15. How much is this? 48. Right, 48 divided by 6. So what is the expected time? 48 by 6. 6 states of 48. 8. Right, simple mathematics. So that, no worries. Except, so Expected time is 8, right? 8 days. Now let's find out how we can utilize this 8 days. Now we have got expected time as 8 days, right? Now there is another concept called as standard deviation. First, let's try and understand what do you mean when you say standard deviation. Now see, when you have got a uh, large amount of random data, if you take mean of it, mean will not represent anything. Right? For example, you know, let, let's take uh, you know number of people inside this room. Uh, let's say you have got a height ranging from five feet to seven feet. If I take average of all the heights, will it give me any significance? It will not give me any 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 idea. However, if let's say I take a deviation from the mean, and if I say you know, one deviation from mean, there are so many people. 
two division from mean there are so many people right then it gives me an idea of some some range i can classify you according to this data now this is standard deviation standard deviation means deviation from the mean now simple formula for calculating the standard deviation in a normal distribution curve or a beta distribution curve is pessimistic minus optimistic by 6 what is the formula pessimistic minus optimistic by 6 now if i take this case for this case it will be 15 minus 5 by 6 15 minus 5 by 6, 6. right as depicted on the screen also the slide that is there in front of you right now 15 minus 5 by 6 so what is the standard deviation big maths 1.67 now let's see how we can find out the risk associated with a expected time based on this standard deviation right now let's 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 focus on the bell curve first you have a bell curve in front of you right the mean the expected value of the bell curve is 8 that we calculated 8 is the expected value here that we calculated using the formula optimistic plus more times most likely plus pessimistic by 6 this is 8 days now <coughs> in a typical bell curve if you remember you know if the background class 12 mathematics central limit theorem the typical symmetrical uh, bell curve is equally distributed across across the mean value right now this means there is 50% data on the left side of the mean and 50% data on the right side of the mean now if let's say i find out plus minus 1 sigma the amount of data that will be con contained in plus minus 1 sigma will be 68% the total the amount of data within to plus minus 2 sigma will be 95% and amount of data within plus minus 3 sigma range will be 99.97 percent right i'll not go further because this is sufficient to get me uh, a good idea of the likelihood of success of the project now let's see how how this sigma value can give me the risk associated with the time now 8 days is my expected time if i take 8 days plus 1 sigma value what is the value 8 plus what is the one sigma value 1.67 for this project if standard deviation is 1.67 8 plus one sigma is how much 9.67 9.67 if i let's say take an approximation can i use 9.7 days right now similarly what will be the value of 8 minus one sigma 6.3 8 minus 1.67 this is 6.3 now what does it tell me it tells me the probability of success of the project to be completed in the range of 6.3 days to 9.7 days is how many per what percent 68% right the the confidence level associated with my estimates now let's take it further using the same bell curve can i find out what is the probability of success of the project so that it gets completed in less than 9.7 days yes we can find it out the probability of success for the project to be completed in less than 8 days is 50% right yes. and from from mean value to one sigma value will be half of 68% right because it is symmetrical across both both the on both the sides which is what 34.13 so 50% plus 34.13 what is that 84.13 so can i say that i can say that uh, the project can complete in less than 9.7 days with a confidence level of 84.13 right so what what i am getting from here i am getting the risk associated with my estimates how can i use put in a practical environment see often when the project get transition from sales to delivery you see sales people a lot of time they push the estimates on delivery 
if you make use of three point estimation the port right now using this you can tell okay i can complete the project in this range but this is the <coughs> confidence level this is the probability of success that's how you can use port now guys any question please feel free to ask we have another example in terms of this we have in terms of days yes sir. and we have it in terms of revenue see wherever there is a data we can use three point same, estimate same, same way same see it's a data collection you are collecting the data and using a bell curve so whether it's a cost or revenue you can use the same method right right okay uh, can you again explain me how you get those days like from 8 to 9.7 and exactly. absolutely let's what is the expected value of time here 8 days 8 days is an expected value of time now what is the standard deviation 1.67 right if i go one sigma higher what is that 9.67 now if i take an approximation of 9.67 it boils down to 9.7 days so i got from mean to one sigma range similarly if i go on the left side of the mean if If I do eight minus one sigma, what is that? Six point three days, right? And this ranges, and the six and six point three to nine point seven days is how how much percent? Sixty eight percent, right? Yes. See, now we have to find out. Let, let's take let's take the same example again. we have to find out what is the probability that project can be completed in less than 9.7 days right now can somebody tell me what is the probability that project can be done in less than 8 days 50% or not yes do you all agree is it 50% yes. right now 50% is the range on the left side of the mean right now when we have now when we talk about 0 to 1 sigma what should be the range Plus minus one sigma is sixty eight percent. So zero. So so mean to six sigma will be half of it. So what is that? Thirty four. So if I add fifty plus thirty four, it is eighty eight. Eighty four. Eighty four percent. Approximately sixty eight point something. Right. So that's how I got this range. So here it is a sixteen percent probability that uh, you know it will not complete in six point three days. Yes. Yes, he is right. Right. We, we can also represent the result in, the, in this manner that there are 16% chances that we will be we might not be able to hit the deadlines. That's that's also how. Uh, this is also how we can interpret the result. Is this clear? It's 50 minus 34%. This is how it is. So, yes. Pankaj, I'm not clear with the 84% logic. So, I get it that you know on the right side of the curve or of the median, the okay. chances is reduced to 50%. And sixty-eight becomes thirty-four. Yeah. 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 Listen carefully. See, what are the chances? Can I answer it first? Can I answer it? It is related. Yeah. So yeah, please. Which is it? We will be able to complete the project in eight days. The percentage is fifty percent. So more number of days shouldn't be it uh, less number of uh, less percentage. No, see if we are given more time, see again, more time to have, more time you will have to cover the fixed scope. More likelihood of success will be there, right? Now let's let let me answer your question. What are the chances that project will be done in less than mean, less than eight days? Can I say fifty percent? Because curve is symmetrically distributed. Now, what are the chances that a, that the project will be completed within? Eight days to nine point seven. So sixty-eight divided by two. See plus plus five years. Right? This around thirty-four. Right. So eight to nine nine point seven is how much? Thirty-four. And below this is how much? Fifty. So fifty plus thirty-four is eighty-four percent. No, below this is also thirty-four, right? No. Below, below, below mean is how much? Oh, got it. Entire fifty. I was talking at six point three. Yeah, that's fine. Got it. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Now see, as an exercise, what we can do is, let's say you need to give a guarantee, right? You have to. Your boss says, 
at least give me an estimate. However, I want likelihood of success to be more than 90%. So let's, the, let's do this as an exercise here. Now, this was a beta distribution curve. Right? This is also called as PERT, Program Evaluation and Review Technique. Now, while we PERT, we, we assume that your data will be randomly distributed. Generally, what happens? Whenever you have a random data distribution is approximately a normal, normal curve. Now, any random data, for example, you know, salaries of people in an organization or heights of people in, uh, in an organization or, or in a country, it will take a normal shape. However, sometimes data might take triangular shape also. Now, triangular shape is seen whenever you have a trend in terms of data. For example, if I say sales of you know winter clothing across an year, this kind of data will take triangular shape. Now, in case of triangular distribution, right? If, we, if the data, your data is triangularly distributed, the the formulas will change. For triangular distribution, the formulas are like this. The formula for the mean or expected value will be optimistic, right, plus most likely plus pessimistic divided by 3, right. And similarly, the formula for standard deviation will be optimistic square plus most likely square plus pessimistic square minus optimistic into most likely, minus most likely into pessimistic, minus pessimistic into optimistic, right? Right, we'll take a square root of the entire thing and divide by 18. Now, you don't need for, for PMP exam purpose, since it is not given in the PIMBOK, you don't have to remember standard deviation formula for, for three, for triangular distribution. But yes, PIMBOK also talks about the expected value of time for, or expected value for triangular distribution, the formula is again optimistic plus most likely plus pessimistic by 3. 